Black history in our community. Did you know that Elizabeth City have local black people who made history? Let's take a look at some local black people who made history in our community. Black history in our community. Lieutenant James Adams, first African American police officer to earn the rank of lieutenant with the Elizabeth City Police Department. Monique Adams, first African American bookmobilist in Pasquotank County. Miss Cora Berry, first African American educator to integrate Elizabeth City Pasquotank County Public Schools. Judge J.C. Cole, first African American male district court judge in the North Carolina 1st Congressional District. Judge Janice M. Cole, first African American female district court judge in the North Carolina 1st Congressional District. Dr. Charles Foster, first African American mayor of Elizabeth City. Jackie King, first African American library director in Pasquotank County, as well as the first assistant director of the East Albemarle Regional Library System. Judge A. Lamb, Elizabeth City native, was the first African American elected to the Waterbury Connecticut Board of Aldermen, along with becoming the first African American in the United States to be elected state treasurer. The third in the nation to be elected to any state office. Dr. Vanita Newby Owens, Elizabeth City native, became the first African American to serve as Director of Health for the Virginia Beach City County. Leander A. Respis, first African American police officer hired in Elizabeth City and the Eastern North Carolina. Helen Whitehurst, first African American male librarian in Pasquotank County. W.C. Witherspoon, first Afri African American to serve as chairman of the Pasquotank County Board of Commissioners, Pasquotank County Library namesake. Harriet Tubman escaped slavery to become a leading abolitionist. She led hundreds of enslaved people to freedom along the route of the Underground Railroad. Born into slavery in Maryland, Harriet Tubman escaped to freedom in the North in 1849. She became the most famous conductor on the Underground Railroad. Tubman risked her life to lead hundreds of family members and other slaves from the plantation system to freedom. As a leading abolitionist before the American Civil War, Tubman also helped the Union Army during the war, working as a spy among other roles. After the Civil War ended, Tubman dedicated her life to helping former slaves and the elderly. Harriet Tubman died of pneumonia on March 10, 1913. Harriet Tubman, is that you? I was just talking about you. Me? Are you the one I'm supposed to lead to freedom? No, Miss Tubman, this is 2021. All the blacks became free in 1863. So this here is not 1853? Wow, I cannot believe that. I have been carrying people to freedom on the underground for a while now. Yes, Miss Tubman, you have led so many blacks to freedom. You accomplished so many endeavors that Different authors have written many books about your accomplishments, and here are some books about your accomplishments. Oh, wow. These books right here? Oh, wow. You gonna tell me that someone wrote about me in those books? Child, no way. It is Good to know my work is not in vain. Let me go because it's more slaves I can bring to freedom. Farewell. Be safe. 
Rosa Parks was a civil rights activist who refused to surrender her seat to a white passenger on a segregated bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Her defiance sparked the Montgomery bus boycott. Its success launched nationwide efforts to end racial segregation of public facilities. Rosa Parks was awarded the Martin Luther King Jr. Award by the NAACP, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the Congressional Gold Medal. Rosa Parks was born on February 4, 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. Rosa Parks was arrested on December 1, 1955 for refusing to give up her seat to a white passenger. She later recalled that her refusal wasn't because she was physically tired, but she was tired of giving in. On the morning of her trial, a crowd of 500 local supporters rooted her on. With so much support, the boycott of buses lasted several months, effectively causing buses to sit idle, severely crippling the finances of the Montgomery Transit Company. The bus boycott officially ended on December 20, 1956. The combination of legal action backed by unrelenting determination of the African American community made the Montgomery bus boycott one of the most successful mass movements against racial segregation in the nation's history. Hello, my name is Rosa Parks. On December 1, 1955, I was arrested for refusing to give up my seat to a white man on the Montgomery bus. You see, back then the buses were segregated, which means whites sat in the front and blacks sat in the back. It was required that blacks had to give up their seats to whites when there were no more seats available. Because I refused to give up my seat, I was arrested and charged with violating the law of segregation. This incident launched the Montgomery bus boycott. People always say, I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. I was not tired physically or no more tired than I usually was at the end of the workday. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. So, I just sat. Henry Boss Brown was an enslaved man who shipped himself into freedom in a wooden box. He developed his published slave narrative into an anti-slavery stage show. Henry Boss Brown was born at a Virginia plantation in 1815. After his family was sold, Brown committed himself to escaping from slavery. He had himself shipped in a wooden box from Virginia to Philadelphia where slavery had been abolished. Given the danger of making Brown escape public, some abolitionist leaders, including Frederick Douglass, argued that it should be kept confidential. Others argued that the story would inspire others' innovative and daring escapes. Brown made the decision to publicize his experience. Shortly after his escape, Brown appeared before the New England Anti-Slavery Society Convention in Boston. Henry Brown toured the region performing his story. Boston publisher Charles Stearns also published a version of the story, which will become one of the best known slave narratives in American history. George Washington Carver was an African American scientist and educator. Carver is famous for many interventions, including a number of use of the peanut. George Washington Carver was born enslaved and went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time, as well as teacher at the Tuskegee Institute. George Washington Carver is well known for his agricultural research, especially for his work with peanuts. Carver made more than 300 products from peanuts including milk substitute, face powders, printer ink, and soap. Carver also produced more than 75 products from pecans and more than 100 products from sweet potatoes including flour, shoe polish, and candy. George Washington Carver spoke about the possibility of racial harmony in the United States. From 1923 to 1933, Carver toured white southern colleges for the commission of interracial corporations. 
George Washington Carver died on January 5, 1943 at the age of 78. He is buried next to Booker T. Washington on the campus of Tuskegee University. Dr. Charles Drew was an African-American surgeon who pioneered methods of storing blood plasma for transfusion and organized the first large-scale blood bank in the United States. Dr. Charles Richard Drew was born on June 3, 1904. He grew up in Washington, D.C. He was a good athlete, so good that he earned a full scholarship to Amherst College. After completing Amherst, Drew attended McGill University, where he was a top student. He won a prize in neuroanatomy as well as being a member of Alpha Omega Alpha, a medical honor society. Drew graduated second in his class. Dr. Drew developed a method for processing and preserving blood plasma. Plasma lasts much longer than whole blood, making it possible to be stored or banked for longer periods of time. In 1940, Dr. Charles Drew became the first African American to earn a degree from Columbia University. As World War II raged in Europe, Dr. Drew was asked to head up a special medical effort known as the Blood for Britain. He organized the collection and processing of blood plasma from several New York hospitals and the shipments of these life-saving materials overseas to casualties of war. Dr. Charles Drew, a true American hero. Garrett Augustus Morgan was born on March 4, 1877 in Paris, Kentucky. He attended elementary school in Kentucky but spent most of his time working on his parents' farm. His parents were former slaves. As a teenager, Morgan moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, where he hired a personal tutor and worked different jobs to support himself. In 1895, Morgan moved to Cleveland, Ohio. He took a position as a sewing machine repairman. Twelve years later, Morgan had accumulated enough money to begin his own sewing machine repair business. Over the next several years, Morgan expanded his business interest to include a tailoring establishment, a personal grooming products company, and a newspaper called the Cleveland Call. By 1920, Morgan had become a wealthy man with dozens of workers in his employ. Morgan was always interested in inventions. His tailoring business was equipped with machines that he had personally designed. During the 1910s and the 1920s, Morgan continued to invent new items. Most of these items were to improve the safety on the streets and in the workplace. Morgan was most famous for patenting the first traffic signal in the United States. Morgan himself, an automobile owner, witnessed a crash between a car and a buggy. This event supposedly convinced the inventor to create a stoplight. On November the 20th, 1923, Morgan received his patent. His traffic signal was mounted on a T-shaped pole. It had three different types of signals, stop, go, and stop in all directions. The stop in all directions signal was to allow pedestrians to cross the street safely. Morgan eventually patented this device in Canada and Great Britain as well. He sold his patent to General Electric Corporation for $40,000. Vice President Kamala D. Harris was born on October 20th, 1964 in Oakland, California. She is a graduate of the illustrious Howard University and a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She was elected to the United States Senate as a Democrat in 2016 and began her first term representing California in that body the following year. She was the first Indian American to serve as a U.S. Senator as well as the second African American woman to serve that role. Harris previously was the state's Attorney General from 2011 to 2017. In November 2020, she was elected Vice President of the United States on a ticket with President Joseph R. Biden. 